my Gewannen folks. It's been quite a while since we solved a non-linear differential equation here on the channel, so here's a cool looking one. And by cool, of course, I mean quite strange indeed. So we have, on the left-hand side, the square of the second derivative of y with respect to x, and on the right we have 1 over root 1 minus y times dy over dx to the fourth power. Okay, cool. So because the x term here is missing explicitly, we can transform this quite nicely by letting dy over dx equal u, which implies that d square y over dx squared equals du over dx. Now, this alone would introduce a differential equation in three variables, x, y, and u, which is far from ideal. So we'll make use of the chain rule and write this as du over dy, dy over dx, meaning that we have dy over dx just being u. So we have d square y over dx squared equal to u times du over dy. And all of this implies that our differential equation is now on the left-hand side. We have u squared times du over dy whole thing squared equal to 1 over root 1 minus y times u to the fourth power. Okay, cool. So we can expand using 1 over u squared. And of course, that way we miss out on one of these solutions, that being the u equal to zero case. But that just yields y equal to a constant, which is not exactly the most exciting solution to miss out on. So yeah, no regrets whatsoever. We have some lovely cancellation taking place. And we now have du over dy squared equal to u squared over 1 minus y to the 1 half. And of course, this implies that du over dy equals plus or minus u over 1 minus y to the 1 quarter. This makes it a separable differential equation that we can solve quite nicely. We have 1 over u du equal to dy over 1 minus y to the 1 quarter. And of course, we have this traveling plus or minus sign that I should not forget. And we'll integrate yielding log u on the left equal to plus or minus on integration. We should have, let's see, 4 thirds times 1 minus y to the 3 quarters, and we'll have a negative sign as well, and a constant of integration a that I will introduce as negative a just by being super pedantic over here. That is just my OCD kicking in and nothing else. And it's kicking in for a reason. Now I'll have a minus plus a minus plus 4 thirds 1 minus y to the 3 quarters. Otherwise, I would have a plus minus a and a minus plus function of y. Again, nothing nothing, will, nothing like that would actually affect the mathematics involved. That's simply my OCD kicking in. So yeah, we have log u equal to all of that stuff. And we can exponentiate this thing to get u here equal to e to the minus plus a times e to the 4 thirds minus plus 4 thirds, that is, 1 minus y to the 3 quarters. Now e to the plus minus a is just going to be another constant, so I'm going to absorb this into the constant a. So we have u equal to a times e to the minus plus 4 thirds, 1 minus y to the 3 quarters. And wait, this is u in terms of y, but we needed y in terms of x, and that is not a difficult task whatsoever. Because we have u equal to dy over dx, implying that dy over dx equals a times e to the minus plus 4 thirds, 1 minus y to the 3 quarters. Okay, cool. That's just another separable differential equation, so it will be solved in exactly that manner. We have e to the plus minus 4 thirds, 1 minus y to the 3 quarters. Terribly sorry about that. I could just write this as exp plus minus 4 thirds, and I'm kind of inclined to write it in this manner because I'm studying way too much quantum mechanics these days. 
So yeah, why not? Just for a change, dy. But of course, then again, theoretical physicists also like writing integrals in this manner, which uh, yeah, that that's that's still off-putting for some reason. Anyway, all for the lols. We all love the physicists. Cannot hate them whatsoever. Goaded. So we have dx over here, and we'll integrate. And I forgot the constant a. Where's the constant? I'll just leave it over here. So we'll integrate everything, and we have the strange-looking integral on the left that I should call i here for reference purposes. And I have i equal to ax plus another constant of integration b. So our next target is to evaluate what exactly this strange integral evaluates out to. So this is the integral we're interested in evaluating, and it just occurred to me that my initial remark on physicists writing the integral in this way sh should not be fair. This is not fair whatsoever because I've only, I've only, I've really only seen this in a few places. The most prominent would be Sakurai's Quantum Mechanics, which is an absolute treasure. I'm loving that book. But if you're a physicist, comment down below how you like writing your integrals with the dx up front or the dx thrown to the back. Okay, cool. So how on earth are we to solve this integral? Well, let's just take the argument of the exponential function. That is 4 thirds of 1 minus y to the 3 quarters and set it equal to t. I mean, why not? Okay, this would imply on differentiating that we have 4 thirds times 3 quarters times 1 minus y to the... 3 quarters minus 1 is, yeah, negative 1 quarter, dy equal to dt. In other words, after all that cancellation, we have dy equal to dt over 1 minus y to the negative 1 quarter. Okay, cool. Or I'll just write this as 1 minus y to the 1 quarter times dt. Now, how to express 1 minus y to the quarter in terms of t? That's not very difficult given our substitution. So we have 4 thirds of 1 minus y to the 3 quarters equal to t, which implies that 1 minus y to the 1 quarter, of course, I'll need to take a third root, which means I should have 3 quarters of t to the 1 third. Okay, cool. So we have dy equal to 3 quarters of t to the 1 third. Wait, I'm, I think I'm missing something. Oh yeah, a negative sign. Chain rule stuff over here. Okay, cool. Once again, so now what? We just plug everything in, I guess. So we have i equal to the integral of e to the plus minus t and the differential element would be t to the one third dt. Uh, we have a negative sign somewhere, I believe. Yes, that negative sign is supposed to be with a dy. So there it is, negative sign outside. And we of course have this factor of three quarters to something. Three quarters to the one third. Perfect. This looks quite similar to the gamma function, only there is a plus t version as well. And uh, another problem is there are no limits. But that's okay, we can still invoke special functions. There is a special function called the incomplete gamma function that can be used over here. But first recall that i is just ax plus b, so if we have ax plus b equal to all that stuff, we could just transform a to negative a and b to negative b because they're just constants. So I can factor out a negative one and get ax plus b equal to three quarters of one third, three quarters to the one third of the integral of e to the plus minus t times t to the one third. And we get rid of the negative sign that I was going to forget anyway. Okay, cool. So now what? Well, there are a couple cases over here. Case one is where we have the integral of e to the t times t to the one third dt. Now, if I 
were to let t equal what exactly? New variable, let's call it z, negative z that is, then dt would be negative dz, and this integral would equal negative e to the negative z. Uh, negative z to the one-third is just negative z, so we have some cancellation there. So we have z to the one-third dz. And z to the one-third is what exactly? That's just z to the two-thirds minus one. So this here can be expressed in terms of the incomplete gamma function. So this here equals gamma of two-thirds, and we have this z parameter, which is actually negative t, and we know what t is. t in terms of y is... What was t in terms of y? Oh yeah, that was negative, uh, that was four-thirds, but we have the negative sign with it now. So four-thirds, four, four fascinating. Four-thirds, terribly sorry about that, math is a lot, a lot more natural than English, or communication in general. One minus y to the three-quarters. So case one is a solution in terms of the incomplete gamma function, and case two over here would also be a solution in terms of the incomplete gamma function? Yes, you guessed right, because the only difference is that we have e to the minus t, t to the one-third, which is just t to the two-thirds minus one, dt, and this is already the incomplete gamma function, so we have incomplete gamma of two-thirds, and the parameter here being t, which is, of course, four-thirds, of 1 minus y to the 3 quarters. So we have two possible solutions here. One is ax plus b equal to, wait, we had something being multiplied. Oh yeah, we had 3 quarters to the 1 third in both cases. So we have 3 quarters to the 1 third of incomplete gamma, 2 thirds of negative two-thirds and negative four-thirds of one minus y to the three-quarters. And the other case is ax plus b equals three-quarters of one-third of the incomplete gamma function of two-thirds and four-thirds of one minus y to the three-quarters. So there you go. It's a differential equation that yields a result in terms of special functions. Absolutely perfect for the usual stuff on the channel. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.